So whenever something bad happens, whenever Trump gets a new uh, Supreme Court appointment that he gets to pick, whenever he gets more authoritarian, smug liberals look down upon the peasants from their ivory towers and they remind them, you did this peasants, you are responsible for all of this. It's not the system that led to Donald Trump, it's not Democrats for failing to appeal to voters, you did this. It's not even Donald Trump or Republican Party voters. You are the one responsible for all of the problems happening in America. And this type of rhetoric and behavior isn't just morally reprehensible, but this is why people hate liberals. This is why people hate liberals. So let me show you a couple of examples. Vox writer Aaron Rupar tweeted this out. Amy Coney Barrett is anti-abortion, anti-gun control, anti-healthcare, and even seems to oppose same-sex marriage. She could sit on SCOTUS for 40 years. Hope those Jill Stein protest votes were worth it. Yes, because the 1% of the electorate that voted for Jill Stein is more responsible for this than Hillary is for losing or more responsible than Ruth Bader Ginsburg herself for not retiring when Obama was still in power, when Democrats were in control of the Senate. If you have a system where our entire democracy hinges on the well-being of really old people with cancer, you know, that's a really dysfunctional system. Now, like, I, I feel bad that Ruth Bader Ginsburg struggled, you know, and suffered for that long. But, I mean, she had autonomy. She could have retired. So, I mean, does she not get any blame? Does Hillary not get any blame for not, you know, campaigning in Wisconsin? Why is it that specifically you're targeting Jill Stein voters? Well, it's because they weren't compliant. And to you, obedience is everything. Obedience is everything. You know, we're never going to look in the mirror and try to determine what we did wrong. As Democrats, we're just going to name and shame until you fall in line. And anytime Trump does something bad, we're going to remind you, you did this. This was you. Now, uh, Aaron Rupar was actually uh, not the worst example of this because Bill Maher apparently uh, decided to take voter shaming to the next level in maybe one of the smuggest segments he's ever done, which I know saying that Bill Maher is smug is kind of like saying, you know, the sky is blue, but this was like the worst ever. Not to relitigate old wounds, but all the Hillary equivocators from 2016, the people who said she was racist, not really that different from Trump, the ones who voted third party, the ones who stayed home because, you know, the lesser of two evils. Sorry, but you all have to eat it one more time. Because, oh, how I would love me some of that Hillary evil right now. <laughs> you know, the evil where liberals would currently have a six to three majority on the court, the evil where people wouldn't be facing having their health care taken away or their right to vote or where America wasn't sliding into autocracy. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> yes. Let's, uh, let's look at the alternative universe. If a few more people in 2016 had told themselves, yeah, she's not my favorite, but you only get two choices in our system, it's probably better to make sure this sane, competent person gets in as opposed to a malignant narcissist. <laughs> in that universe, we're still in the pra Paris Climate Accord, and Iran's nuclear program is still frozen, and maybe so is Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> there have been none of the rollbacks on clean air and water. Dreamers don't have to worry about getting tossed out of the only country they've ever known. William Barr is just a right-wing crank self-publishing a book on our moral decline. <laughs> and Brett Kavanaugh is drinking from home. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a wonderful world, this world. People hearing the words P-tape only think of R. Kelly. <laughs> and no one has needed or heard of a pink pussy hat, let alone tried to knit one. <laughs>
And look, no nation as fundamentally unhealthy as this one could escape a pandemic unscathed, but I think Hillary would have done a little better than let them drink bleach. <laughs> so... The Supreme Court hears oral arguments to overturn Obamacare on November 10th. Once this new justice is seated, Obamacare is likely gone. And after that, Roe versus Wade. So I hope you enjoy carrying your rape baby to term. You can name it Jill Stein. <laughs> that was horrible. That is why people hate liberals, leftists, and socialists who should theoretically, you know, uh, be able to work with liberals on some things can't stand them. Why there's this civil war in the Democratic Party? It's because there's no respect. There's no attempt to try to approach third party voters and Jill Stein voters and people who didn't vote from, you know, a place of understanding and empathy. It's just judge, 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 blame, blame, blame. I mean, you're a multimillionaire, Bill Maher. And you are explaining to people who made this choice, who are less privileged than you, that they're wrong and they're responsible for everything that's bad when they're the ones who are bearing the brunt of the consequences, not you. You're judging them from your ivory towers in the most condescending way imaginable. He says, the ones who voted third party, the ones who stayed home because, you know, the lesser of two evils, sorry, but you all have to eat it one more time. And in addition to this, you know, there's everyone sharing gifs of Hillary Clinton laughing, saying, Hillary fucking warned you about all of this. What? And then he goes on to explain, um, you know, Hillary would have been so much better. Nobody is saying that Hillary Clinton wouldn't have been better than Donald Trump. Sure, you can say maybe it was the case that some people went too far in their criticisms of Hillary Clinton and perpetuated this false equivalence that was harmful, but nobody is saying that things wouldn't be better under Hillary Clinton. We all admit that Donald Trump is bad and acknowledge that Donald Trump is bad, but Hillary Clinton, she's got to be at least somewhat culpable in your mind, no? If Hillary had the foresight that everyone says she does and that she warned us about all of this, why didn't she have the foresight when voting for the Iraq war? Why didn't she anticipate that Trump would be a bigger threat than he was when she propped him up with her Pied Piper strategy, when Bill Clinton encouraged him to run? On top of that, Hillary Clinton kept giving the middle finger to Bernie Sanders supporters. And even though 85% of them fell in line and voted for Hillary Clinton, you're still outraged at the fact that that 15% didn't fall in line. And most Jill Stein votes probably came from these deep blue states like California and New York. But still, you blame the voters and not Hillary Clinton. Like, do you understand why this is problematic? You're turning people off. Do you think this is going to encourage people to vote for the Democratic Party? Do you honestly believe this is going to benefit you? Or are you just doing this literally because it makes you feel superior? Here's the thing. In 2016, 46.9% of eligible voters stayed home. And, you know, Bill Maher kind of alluded to the fact that they're also to blame. But do you think this is because half of Americans were just like super petty and hated Hillary Clinton? Or do you think that there are systemic factors here worth looking at? The fact that voting rights are under attack. The fact that people have to work and they may not be able to actually go to the polls. But it speaks to a flaw in the entire system. Because when you have, uh, like, most people or half of people not participating in democracy, that means that that democracy is not very healthy. That means that democracy is dying in that country. So there's something deeper going on here. But Bill Maher isn't intellectually curious. He just wants to do what makes himself feel better. And that is, you know, make everyone else feel like shit. So he can feel good when he does jack fucking shit to make sure that Trump doesn't get another term. How many phone calls did you make for Hillary Clinton in 2016, Bill? How many phone calls are you making for Joe Biden? How many doors are you knocking on? How much money are you donating? Come on, man. Now, he also blamed people that voted for Jill Stein and suggests that she acted as a spoiler. And Democrats always point to Wisconsin and that, you know, if Jill Stein wasn't there... Hillary Clinton would have taken Wisconsin. But if you look at those 2016 results, Gary Johnson was the Republican Party spoiler, and he got three times the amount of votes that Jill Stein did. And in this particular state, if you took away third party options and assumed they would have voted for the two major parties, and you distribute their votes away from Jill Stein and Gary Johnson to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, 
Trump wins by an even larger margin. So the spoiler ended up helping Hillary Clinton in many ways in 2016. Not to mention the fact that someone like my mom, who voted for Jill Stein, helped Democrats. Because look, my mom was in her 60s, and for the very first time she registered to vote in 2016 because she believed that Bernie Sanders was the only politician that ever cared. But when Bernie lost, she decided, I don't want to vote, I'm going to check out. So I showed her Jill Stein's platform. You know, I told her that she has policies that are very similar to Bernie Sanders. And, you know, of course, I explained we're in Oregon. It's a deep blue state. So, you know, it, it's not as crucial here. The electoral votes will go to Hillary Clinton. And, you know, if we vote for Jill Stein, maybe we can get the Greens to 5% to where Democrats will feel the need to steal some of their policies and see them as competition or institute ranked choice voting. Like, my mom voted because Jill Stein inspired her. And a lot of people voted because Jill Stein inspired her. If Jill Stein wasn't an option, that's not to say that those voters would have voted for Hillary Clinton. It would have led to more people probably staying home. And guess what? My mom didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, neither did I. But we still voted for Democrats down the ballot. My mom did too. She's a non-voter. And then she registered to vote for the first time because of Bernie Sanders. And had she not been convinced to vote for Jill Stein, she wouldn't have voted for Democrats at the state and local level. So by you shaming Jill Stein voters when just getting people to vote in and of itself is a challenge in America, you should be ashamed of yourself, Bill Maher. You should be ashamed of yourself, especially considering the fact that most leftists and Bernie Sanders supporters end up falling in line anyway. And guess what? You basically got what you wanted. Look at this poll here. A plurality of people that voted third party in 2016 will in fact be voting for Joe Biden this time. And an outright majority of people who just didn't vote in 2016 say that they will in fact be voting for Joe Biden this time. So I mean, liberals got exactly what they wanted. What more do you want? And now that you have more people doing what you want, now you're going to say, fuck anyone who uh, didn't support Hillary Clinton. You did all of this. Trump appointing Amy Coney Barrett, you did this. It's not that Democrats refused to fight. It's not that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was irresponsible for not retiring as much as we wanted her on the Supreme Court and needed her on the Supreme Court. She knew the risk. Democrats knew the risk. Hillary knew the risk of running a shitty campaign where you don't reach out to the left and you don't go to Wisconsin, but yet you blame voters. If anything, like one of the people who voted for third party in 2016 and is now going to vote for Joe Biden, like hearing you say that, trying to make them feel like shit, do you honestly think they're going to agree with you? Or do you think they're just going to say, all right, well, fuck it then. I can't win. I'm still a piece of shit, even though this time I'm voting for Joe Biden. So fuck it. I'm just not going to vote. Like, do you honestly think you're helping Democrats here? It's just astonishing that liberals like Bill Maher continue to do this. No sense of self-awareness whatsoever. Beta male, not a beta male.